Today we're out here at the Ryan Seed Helping Track. We've got moved in and set up and uh, things were going great, it, but uh, I don't know, it seemed like the, the shadows following us. We were short of trucks again. Um, we've done a extensive work on the road, putting hay down. We probably got three quarters of a mile or a mile of road hay in the, in the sand and we got the sun stripped and got it graded up nice and I figured we wouldn't have any issues getting trucks in. but. We had several contract trucks, but uh, there are no shows today, and we got a bunch of wood stacked up, no trucks to haul it again. We got some college kids coming out this morning. Uh, they're actually coming from the western part of North Carolina. And uh, the Forest Service, Hans, has been out here many times with different uh, groups of students. And uh, I, I think it's a good thing because they're taking these young foresters and they're bringing them to different parts of North Carolina and probably other states. But they bring them out to different type of logging jobs and they kind of educate them on, on what shovel logging is and what thinning is and what conventional logging is. But uh, for the last several years, they've been coming out and usually groups of 20 to 25 kids will come out and, and just kind of ask questions and, and look at what we're doing. And, um, and I think it's a good thing because we're educating them on the different processes that go on in our state. And uh, I always look forward to seeing them out here. How you doing, sir? Where y'all from? Haven Community hey, College. What's that at? Hey, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Did uh, did, they, did uh, John get his head showing them on bulldozers or something? Yeah, yeah, we we giving them a history. They want to know about what you do. I tell you yeah. one thing, the guy that pulled those out front. Hey, hold on, I'm gonna wait it out, mate. I show you. See, this is this is what we've been doing for back in '96. Been hauling lock in 32 years. I call that done. Back shoulder, back. Hello, I'm Hans Rohr. I'm with the North Carolina Forest Service, and um, a lot of colleges come to our forest. I'm actually the forest supervisor of Bladen Lake State Forest, and a lot of colleges come visit our forest. And I thought it would be a good idea to show them also some swamp logging, especially the colleges who come from the mountains because they have never seen this here. And so I try to organize this tour here to Bobby um, about once or twice a year. Smitcher actually cuts the shovel road. This right here is actually a shovel road there and there's actually one going in right there. He'll, get, he'll actually kind of, for the most part, make 80% of the road. And then we'll drive down it with a tractor to break the tops down so the shovel man can see where the, the road is. Then he'll go down that road and wherever holes are, he'll put trees in it and whatever excess wood he's got, he'll set on the road behind it. Okay. And when he gets to the, the back of it, the, you know, that's why the gravel tractors are steady pool. Mm -hmm. And when he gets to the back of it, then they'll start picking it up coming back out. Picking it apart. Yep. And we'll get about 80, 85% of the wood back up. Believe it or not, it's considered mechanized because we don't have anybody on the ground limit. And that's one of the biggest unforeseen pluses because, I mean, hardwood, you always got limbers. Matter of fact, when I, before I started shoveling, we would have two limbers and a guy to cut trees down because we didn't have saw heads then. Yeah. So you always have people on the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we start, once we started shoveling and got saw heads, well, we realized right then that we don't need a chainsaw no more because Vitro could cut a 60 inch tree down, or bigger probably, and making the road to try to run on it, there's no limbs left on it anyway. So we just got one guy that trims up trucks and spot trailers. And that's, that's been a big uh, help to us. Um, because lot, you know, anytime you got some on the ground, it's a lot better. Well, you the just, hardwoods here seem to be, because they grow so tight, they tend not to be real limmy anyway. True, it's in a true part. hardwood swamp. We have more trouble if we cut a, a marginal track mm -hmm. where you got the, uh, the oaks and you stuff up there, because they're there, yeah. little and limmy. I mean, we have a hard time with those. Yeah. Matter of fact, it'd be hard as a brick, we'll throw them down and run on them <laughs> and get the limbs off of them. <laughs> We need to go up to the mountains and see. You need to come up and visit us. Yeah, for, first weekend of October, we got the timber. He's our captain, timber sports captain. You are, and 
We have a we have like 150 contestants up there doing timber sports. We're really? at the cradle of forestry. We have a blast. Right? Yeah, that's really. I want to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're having no. the German contingency coming out this year. Yeah. A whole a whole group of folks from Germany are coming out. Good. And uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. That is definitely a lost art. Yeah. What y'all do? Yeah. yeah. I was, I, I'm a, Not always, me, these guys. Yeah, I always watch old videos. <laughs> and, you know, a big lager was 5'9", 145 pounds, soaking wet. I don't know how they did it. Like one guy said, when timber was big, loggers were small. Now timber small, loggers are big. big. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gary Fitzgerald. I'm an instructional assistant with Haywood Community College, working with Dr. Yike uh, with our logging and marketing class. Uh, this is my tr second trip down here in about three or four months. My first trip was in May or in March as a student, so now I'm coming down as an instructor, and it's always fascinating to come out here, come down here and see swamp logging because it's so much different than what we see up in the mountains, uh, in the mountainous terrain where we're mostly dealing with uh, high-value hardwoods down here. It's just incredible, and Bobby is such a joy to talk to and, and to learn from. Uh, I really enjoy my time here. I love my experience. It was great, you know, being out here. I'm actually from the Sand Hills region and just seeing the coast and everything, it gives a different perspective from the mountains to the coast of how different logging techniques there are. And I think it's really cool getting to get all this experience then, you know? Yeah, pretty much. It's a, this is a pretty good logging operation. I've never been to one like this. They got the uh, good size equipment here. Uh, I'm from the mountains, so I ain't never seen nothing like this before. We usually got the smaller equipment, like dozers and stuff like that, so this is pretty interesting to see this size of equipment. Hi, James Yike. I'm with uh, Haywood Community College, forestry instructor, and we are down here with 18 of our students uh, in the uh, forestry management program. Uh, part of that program includes uh, an introduction to logging and marketing, and so we we spend a lot of time looking at uh, logging and uh, operations up in the mountains and forest industry up in the mountains, but we like to get folks down here to the eastern part of the state to see the mechanized logging equipment, and what better place to go see that than right here the, in the swamp logging. Now this is about as, as, about as uh, large of an operation as you could ever hope to see, and, and uh, really uh, an amazing uh, feed of technology, so we really enjoy coming down here, and we love hearing Bobby's stories too. So, <laughs> so appreciate the the opportunity. <laughs> One more time, all three. All right, good deal. Y'all yeah. hit like and share, so Dave can go feed his crew. The college kids uh, had just left and uh, it was cool, the experience they got because the area that we're in is a lot of history. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that the Marshall family used to own this property back in the 30s and 40s and it was all logged and actually some of their old equipment is is actually scattered out through the woods here and there's some out on, in, on the main road out there. but. I think John Deans and, and David Robinson with Corbett had, had carried them by there and gave them a, a full history of this area. And then they actually got to come out and see us, you know, cut the timber. And this is, I'm, I know it's the second time it's been cut. It's probably been cut three or four times since America was discovered, but I know it's been cut twice. Uh, but they've got out here and, and, and actually kind of seen our shovel operation. And of course, it's, it's fun when the guys come out here and they ask questions, you know, about our equipment, the process, and. Uh, know what type of wood we're dealing with because when you get in different regions of, of North Carolina the trees were different I mean where they're from up in the mountains they got a lot higher quality oaks and they got more oaks more hardwood up there than the areas pine I think but down here it's a lot of southern yellow pine and we have hardwood swamps and uh, our woods quality is not as good but we got good pulp wood and we got cypress they usually don't have cypress up there and cypress is probably the biggest money tree that we have down here but it, I always like to see the kids come out because we're trying to educate them and teach them that we're not harming the environment. We're actually doing a process that's been done many times before and it's just, uh, it's material that's, that we're utilizing and it's, it grows again. Go. 
Dustin, he's going to pack a cylinder for us on his loader. It's uh, it's actually the newest loader we got, and uh, the cylinders will 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 fail in two different ways. If you ever open the grapple up and it and it just leaks closed by itself, that that right there, that's the internal leak. That is the piston. The O-rings on the on the piston are bad, and it's causing it to leak internally. But ours is actually leaking externally, and it's coming out around the rod, and that's the gland. The gland has got packings on the inside of it, and whenever those packings, you know, from from heat and age and wear, you know, they'll eventually wear out. Or if you get a nick on the rod, it'll cut it. But uh, that'll cause the oil to leak out on the ground, and we don't we don't want that. So we're going to fix that as soon as possible. But uh, but on the other aspect of it, if, if the piston on the inside is leaking, the loader man, when he grabs a grapple full of wood, he has to constantly hit the button because the grapple will leak up. So that's that's kind of a, a danger, that's a hazard there. So uh, Justin's trying to get some of the maintenance called up and, and that's one that uh, we need to get on and, and get it done so we're safe and we're not dripping oil everywhere. All right out there everybody, this is Terrell coming at you again. And I heard that if we get 100,000 views, likes, or what did the subscribe? No, I think it's 100,000 likes, that Dave is gonna come out here and cook for us. So if you would, please hit like on our video, because you know what this old belly here, boy. She, she love to eat now, especially some good food off the grill. But yeah, I, I think a lot of people been asking about Dave, and, and if we get them likes up, I think Dave gonna make a, he gonna make a guest appearance out here. Get some trucks sap and get that hundred load a week mark and get that bonus. I couple doing pine, but I can do the hardwood just as easy. I mean I've been running the loader about 13, 14 years now. So I, I like it a lot. Okay, I heard Dave, we get a hundred thousand views, he would come out here and cook for us. And he can cook. I've heard he can cook real good. Got the insurance man coming out here today. Usually about once or twice a year, they'll come out and just check on us, make sure we're still doing everything like we should be doing. But the biggest thing I get out of it, I find out exactly what's going on, you know, um, with the, the trucks, I mean, what kind of accidents has happened over the past year. And it gives us talking points when we ever have safety meetings um, to tell our guys about it. Because, I mean, an accident is something that is unforeseen. You know, we cover five states, and it is in all five states we currently cover. The, uh, the biggest issue is our star many wrecks. I mean, wrecks. It, it seems to me we're averaging one a week. Really? And, uh, you yeah, know, we're doing everything we can between the Team Safe Trucking. Yeah. And, and I know Keith has instituted, in fact, January 1st, I don't know, you've probably seen the letter, or I know Lori has probably. Yeah. But uh, you guys are already on a drug test program, but we're making it mandatory for anyone we can short. Yeah. That their drivers on the drug test program. I mean, it's a federal requirement. It is. I mean, I don't know how, I don't know why you would want to take a chance. Not the way the opiate problem we got in this country, and you just don't know who's on it anymore. And you don't want, you take a truck that's 80,000 pounds, 90,000 pounds going down the road, and you got some crackhead behind the wheel, you're asking for issues. And, I mean, none of us want our families out there on no. that. Not like that. No. And uh, unfortunately, you know, 40, 50% of our claims, truck reps, have come back drug test positive. Really? Had a 70 year old not long ago, fatality, came back to drug test positive. Yeah. I'm Tony Havens with Forster Mutual Insurance. We handle Bobby's workers' comp insurance for both Bobby and Justin's crews. And we come out at least a minimum once a year and visit with Bobby, just make sure things going safe out here, let him know the claims that we've seen on the outside and the trucking claims, and of course give him safety meetings for his crews. But uh, it's always good to keep safety in the forefront because, I mean, this is a job where everybody wants to go home at the end of the day. And, uh, and safety is where it's at. I mean, you got to be safe, and that's one thing I like about this the insurance man coming out here. He, gives, he lets us know what's been going on with the trucks, with the end wood stuff, and uh, it just puts it in the, in the forefront of our minds, so we talk to the guys about it and uh, kiss everybody on their toes, and that's important out here. Truck coming out, truck coming out, leave the trim up, 10 gold. Well, 
Okay, well, this today is Wednesday. Our load count is pretty low for the, for the week. One reason because uh, shortage on trucks. That's the main thing, getting to the mill and uh, the wood quality. Really need at least uh, two short loads, one long load, to make that work out for the week. And uh, hopefully next week will be a better week. And get some more trucks in here and the wood product to pick up. And uh, if we get 100,000 shares, 100,000 views on this video, when our former members gonna, gonna cook for us. So let's get that wood haul driver and work him in and make that, make that uh, cook out there. Right here, let's put the wood. I, I have a lot of wood, but I need the trucks for, I need to make a bonus everything. And now having the trucks, no, the drive is only four. The company no contract with trucks. This week, next week, I don't know, maybe next week contract coming more trucks for a, uh, we need everything, make a bonus. And, uh, and Baba he said, need a trucks. I don't know what happened, uh, maybe next week coming. The, the wood is pretty wood. I got a plenty of wood and the, Lot of so they only we need a uh, trucks to carry to the mill. If they get a hundred loads, David Miller is cooking for everybody. I need to ask y'all for some help. Y'all admit y'all heard me talk about not having enough trucks. This has been an ongoing thing since the first of the year. So we're seven months into this year and we're losing 15 to 20 loads every single week, you know, because not having enough trucks. I mean, we're we're on we're in eastern North Carolina, we're over here by Moores Creek Battleground, we're hauling back to Georgetown. 128 mile haul. Back at a few years ago, everybody wanted a long haul, uh, but for whatever reason, I don't know why, we just we can't find any trucks to help us. So if y'all know, if anybody out there that needs to haul wood, I mean, we'll keep, if they got extra trailers, we keep the trailers spotted out for them, loaded. Um, we trim the trailers up. We've got road equipment. We keep the road in good shape. I just don't know the answer to it. I don't. I guess there's not enough people out there, but, uh, but if y'all know anybody, that lives in this area, that needs to haul wood or, or has a truck and a trailer, and needs work, just to call us. Um, we'll give you the number. But um, I need some help, and I hope y'all can get out there and, and find me some trucks, because uh, we got to have it this damn business.
want to say something else. It's on along the same lines of, uh, of, of trucks and driving. In, in our part of the country, the, the, the big industries here is logging and it's uh, commercial hog farming, turkeys and chickens. And I don't know why, why, but for all of a sudden the hog farmers are coming under attack, and uh, and it's not their doing. I mean, all they do is supply a commodity that the people want. If people didn't want it, they wouldn't have a job. Same thing here. If people don't want no paper or they don't want the wood. I don't have a job. So you know, and I know that's a big part of our industry over here, and a lot of people depend on that type of industry for, to make their living. And uh, we as a community need to stick together and, and, and pray for the, uh, the hog farmers and, and, and pray for our industry as a whole because that's what made this country great is, being, is independent families producing products that the people need. Guys, thank y'all for watching the videos, and y'all remember that the offer still stands from Dave. If we can hit 100,000 likes, he's going to cook for us. Remember to find me some truck drivers to haul my wood. Remember the hog farmers, and if you like the videos, please hit the, uh, the button down at the bottom, and uh, we'll continue to make them for you.